hi. I'm, uh, I've just had to start because I think when you like set yourself up to do something properly, for me anyway, I always fail. Um, I'm going to try not to fail in future, but I don't want to be scripted or prepared or natural. So anyway, I'm just going to crack on and see what comes out of my mouth. Um, mental health and psychedelics. It, it, it'll, all, it'll all tie in somehow. Uh, but I'm just going to start riffing wherever. So while I was uh, sat down earlier, just zoning in or out, whatever, just weirdest little drawings and shit. <laughs> um, talk about psychedelics, um, DMT, mushrooms, year 2000, dreamy of the night about tunnel with faces in it. Okay, so hopefully I'll intermingle all those as well because something in me wants to talk about those certain things today. So I'm going to go for that. So, um, I always wanted to do a trip report as well, but I, I felt like because I'd got kids that I would be misunderstood um, or misrepresented or labelled as a bad parent when, I, when in fact I think that um, I've got enough proof that psychedelics uh, have done nothing but improve my parenting. Um, because it brings you back to being a child and being close to source and being free and insignificant but part of everything. Powerful, colourful, just oh everything. So um by the way I'm laughing at this cup. It's not mine. <laughs> Should be, maybe, maybe not. I'm going to have to turn the music down and try and zone in a little bit more because I'm... Oh, I'm just feeling all this energy so much. Um, the atmosphere, certain uh, synchronicities again, things I'm listening to, things that are hitting home. The daily tasks that I feel are coming thick and fast for me. Um, in ways which I didn't expect to come so quickly and so I'm sort of wary about just sort of taking my time before I start talking. I want to make sure that I've uh, I'm not sort of got any shit in me. I hope people hang around when I start zoning out because I'm uh, awful for this. So, right, I'm going to talk about a DMT trip that I had. I'm going to talk about DMT actually because I did a lot of research about DMT, the so called spirit molecule, and um, if you've not heard about this or read about it, um, please watch DMT, The Spirit Molecule, uh, with an open mind and, uh, whoa, it's pretty true what they say, although I don't feel I've ever had what's been typically described as a breakthrough on DMT. I've definitely been in altered states on DMT. Um, so, for some reason I feel the significance of talking about my birthday. Um, so my birthday is uh, New Year's Eve, 31st of December, 1985. And um, why that is significant to me now, I don't know. I just feel like birthdays are significant. Um, a couple of, um, about three weeks ago, I paid for a numerology chart online and I've still yet to really delve into that because at that time I wasn't fully accepting that airy-fairiness of my inquiry of mind. 
Um, but I'm definitely going to go back and, and look at that because the sections, it was so long and I just didn't have time. But the big portions that I managed to scan through seemed to depict me quite well. And I um, got an astrological natal chart a couple of weeks ago. Again, I feel I feel really bad that I didn't because I, I uh, had a face to face like a FaceTime session with somebody who knows what she's talking about and she interpreted my chart and she was guiding me and she gave me what I needed at that moment but because it was such a surreal moment I couldn't retain the relevant information and so I feel like I can't ask her again because she'll think well, what were you like nodding along to while I was telling you but I was just like oh. I was getting my own sort of messages through it um <clears throat> Some, yeah, I know that on this chart I've got seven houses empty, which I think I was told is a good thing. I think that's a good thing, and uh, I've got to get to certain certain things, and I feel that that is what I'm doing. I just wish I could understand a bit more. That's what I should focus on instead of listening to <clears throat> other things that I listen to sometimes. Anyway, so DMT, birthday, significance of that, just had to throw it out there. And while it's on my mind as well, by um, some sort of, um, my, uh, my fingers on my phone took me to a channel called Rita511 and I've watched two videos of hers and for some reason they made me go like that when I was watching it, which usually means to me that I have taken something significant from that. And she interprets um, words, she, she words into numbers. She simplifies things and uses different mathematics to interpret words. And um, I used to do this as a kid, I remember, that A, a is one, B is two c is three and i used to do all that type of thing uh, but maths i've never been amazing at i got turned off by it at an early age but i remember simple maths like how this is how this type of thing is worked out i used to do as a kid and so i should definitely look back into it because this is what this woman does um but what's weird again is that the um what and uh the the lady what she surmises i won't go into because um, again I think take what you want from everything but um, it's been weirdly synchronistic for me what I've come across on her channel today so if anyone's intrigued or you're as sort of uh, yeah if you're intrigued have a look um, for some reason it was resonating with me so my birthday as well that's another thing and this is pretty it doesn't need to be gross because I can word it differently yes so the year 2000 I heard some significance to that the other day Y2K and I was still at school I was like 14 coming up to 15 and um, <clears throat> my birthday is obviously New Year's Eve and on <clears throat> the eve of the millennium I started my menstrual cycle, which I thought was weird when I thought about um, the rhesus negative blood and um, yeah, so I, I, whatever, I don't know any what I'm talking about, but what I, whatever. Um, God, my heart's beating. It's because I was thinking about that synchronicity, yeah. And again, it, it might mean nothing, but sometimes I watch something and it's so hush in that I can't, I have to sort of, I'm still not processing it because I've just come across it. But yeah, and so numbers, words, letters, code. This is the type of thing that I was having streams of information with during psychedelic trips in the past. Um, I'm not telling my stories very well at all, am I? My birthday, I'll get back to that, yes, because this year, um, <clears throat> on my birthday, my 32nd birthday, 
um, we'd managed to acquire some um, some DMT and um, the children were away, it was New Year's Eve and I decided that at midnight on my birthday on New Year's Eve I wasn't going to go out and drink, I'd stopped drinking for like a year, I've not drank for a long time, which is crazy because I used to drink all the time. Uh, so that's one thing psychedelics do, um, or did for me anyway, completely cut that out of my life. Um, yeah, I got the, something told me that I needed to take this DMT which had been sat there, we'd had it for months and I was too scared to do it and I was like, no, 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 because um, I'd, uh, I'd had two prior attempts at a breakthrough and I'll speak about those potentially in a bit if I don't lose my track again. But anyway, so it scared me. But anyway, I thought, just do it. You know, one of these sort of internal courage things. Again, it's like, dare you step into the unknown or are you going to be ruled by fear your whole life? Um, I'd heard so many positive things about DMT and I was so personally intrigued about how I could interpret my own experience of it that I built myself up to do it anyway. I'd got the wrong equipment. Um, I think, I th well, I mean, it, it it went wrong. I tried to sandwich it. I don't think it... Whatever, I won't, I won't say what I did. Or will I? It doesn't matter. I mixed some weed with it. Um... And I smoked it through this sort of like silicon pipe, which was the wrong thing to do, but it was what I'd got. And I just thought to myself I'd do it. It was like a rainbow coloured thing. And, I, and anyway, and um, I went into um, the bedroom to do it. And obviously there was uh, no one else around but my partner at the time. And uh, But he was in a separate room anyway. And... Um, the room I was in, our, our house has got fairy lights and art and colour and toys and stuff everywhere. It is, it is very, um, very trippy anyway. Um, but it was a particularly trippy room and anyway, so I got myself as close to able to do it as I could. My heart was still going. And um, tried to do three big inhales, held it for as long as I could. and. Uh, it, it immediately uh, took me elsewhere, but I was still grounded. Uh, I was sort of in an in-between state, um, and something told me to just keep going. Um, and so over the course of about 10 or 15 minutes, uh, I kept drifting in and out and having a bit more when I could. It was very strange because it was a prolonged experience, which is not very common with... Um, DMT <laughs> yeah. uh, you're supposed to be in and out after 10 minutes but I think because I wasn't getting the breakthrough I was I was wanting to go to DMT land and what I was experiencing wasn't what I had preconceived in my head as DMT land it was somewhere in between and it was a sea of just colour and music and sound um, and I kept wanting to go that extra Anyway, I probably had about 10 sort of inhales over the course of about half an hour in, in total. But um, visually, um, when I was able to open my eyes, which I was for quite a long time, I could see different layers to everything. Um, a bit, uh, well, very sort of stereotypically psychedelic in terms of visual acuity, um, trails, um, <clears throat> when I saw um, Mark, I saw big green spots come up all over his face, like some sort of, um, I don't know, it was, it was weird. Um, but yeah, and so this prolonged DMT trip, which I think was scaring Mark, because I wasn't obviously supposed to be sort of like zonked out for like half an hour. Um, he kept popping in to try and see if I was alright and I was trying to tell him with my mind I'm alright, don't worry, I'm having a great time, go out because I was intrigued and I was having a great time but basically what I was in was like if you can just imagine the most beautiful watercolour um, 
canvas and it's got all the pastel shades and um, pinks and purples, indigos, silvers, gold, like how you'd envisage heaven really uh, in a sort of foggy watercolour merged um, shiny see-through way. Um, Sorry, I've just got a text, it's put me off. Um, yeah, anyway, so I'm in this place and um, I'm thinking, wow, wow, wow. And I could sort of swim my way through it. And the more at ease with the situation I was, the more pleasant the experience became. Um, but I was aware of linear time. I was still aware that I was in the bedroom, I had taken DMT, I was um, probably looking weird to Mark when he kept coming in um, and I didn't want to be in this juxtaposition, I wanted to throw myself straight in, hence why I kept trying to top up or break through. Um, anyway, um, so I'm sort of swimming around in this thing. And then I noticed this was all sort of towards my right, towards my right of my vision. It felt like the right of my brain was being activated. And then um, towards the left, it was darker. It felt darker, felt threatening. Um, that was sort of where the fear was, down the left sort of side. And so anyway, I was swimming away in this sort of nothing but merge of watercolour. It felt like a big soup of everything. The universe. And yeah, and I felt like the lesson I was being taught was how to stay away from the dark and keep in the colour. Um, and this is the sort of thing that I felt like has happened during my psychedelic trips before. Um, I've had a, maybe eight in total and they've all been so beneficial and I feel like my consciousness has expanded beyond even what I thought I was capable of. Dreaming, thinking, um, manifesting, but anyway, um, yeah, so that was all a bit strange. Um, while I'm on DMT, I'll just quickly explain what happened to me the first and second time because I feel like I got different messages through those. So first time, it was um, after a friend's wedding and it was planned, it had been planned for months and months and months with this stuff for months and months and months. Anyway, um, first big hit, held it in. And I heard a voice in my head laugh and say, you're not ready, you're not ready, ha ha ha. And all the breath was taken from my body and I felt like I was unable to breathe. My heart was pounding and then I felt um, like an electric shock start from my feet and buzz all its way, buzz its way all the way up my body. I heard the vibration, I felt the shock. Zzzz and um, it got stuck around my throat, um, which now I feel is significant for loads of different reasons at the time I didn't understand. And I was stuck in this state for about five minutes. Um, what I had to do was, because my mind was still functioning and I was aware of what was going on aside from this uh, paralysis, um, which it was paralysis. So I had to use my higher mind or my stronger part of my mind to speak to myself that was struggling to say, breathe, breathe, anchor yourself in breathing and you'll come out of this uh, soon. Uh, I even managed a little smile at the voice that had told me that I wasn't ready for it and that had laughed somewhat menacingly. Um, so, I mean, I, 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 I reflected on that for a long time. And I had big changes because of that. Um, the second time I did it, 
was very strange again. I was dying, dying to break through, but I couldn't hold it in, coughed, second hit too much, again, in between. But where I went to was bush. Um, it was a picture-perfect postcard of what, to me, looked like stereotypical Jerusalem. Um, and I say that in a very uh, ignorant mindset. Um, what I mean is one of those, like a Christmas card that you'd see that's got the um, navy blue background, um, one big star, some sort of like mosque type thing um, with a dome and um, desert type of thing in front of it. It felt like Israel, Jerusalem, somewhere holy, like some sort of Mecca place or whatever. And it went, my vision went whoosh down to this picture of this place. And I was trying so hard to will myself to get into it, um, but I couldn't and I was back out and that was sort of it for that experience. But again, so much to reflect on because of that. And again, I'm speaking this out loud. I've not spoken about this for a long time. I felt like I couldn't speak out about my own psychedelic experiences. I could only write about them up until now. So. So, God, I've been going on for 21 minutes already. Whoosh. Do people mind having long videos? Because sometimes I do, because I've got a busy life with kids and there's so many interesting channels you don't want to commit, do you? I think I'll try and round up about DMT and then I'll do another video about what I think the benefits are for mental health straight after because I'm just rambling and is that beneficial to anyone but myself maybe um, so yes DMT I'm going to do it again one day when I'm brave enough I know I am because my in my intrigue and my understanding of spirituality and trusting your gut and your instinct for positive change in this reality is so far being sort of serving to me so I feel I've got to at one point in my life maybe it'll be 10 years away but I've got to get this breakthrough. So if anybody else, I hope I'm not ostracizing or putting people off with talk of uh, psychedelics. I think it will become, hopefully, unless there's some sort of agenda, which I'm always cynical of. Um, especially with this assisted suicide with mental health that's going along, going on in some countries. It's like, ooh. It's like what we should be doing is helping people that are struggling with mental health by education and giving them good services and guidance and not helping them to end their life. Although I still struggle with what I believe about euthanasia. It's not what I used to believe. Because um, I think that everybody can enjoy what we're here to enjoy. Everything is salvageable I think it just takes a lot of people to understand so yeah uh, apparently um, by 2021 in England MDMA will be approved for um, psychiatric therapy for PTSD which I've got personal experience with, which I'll speak about as well. So I'm super happy if that's the way forward that we're going over here. I like the fact that certain states in America seem to be going forward and hopefully with education and understanding and no fear, it can be a subject that's becoming no longer taboo. So I'll leave this one here for now, shall I? Yep, and I'll just start rambling on another one. Thanks for listening to me, if anyone else.